Today's episode of the Crazy Town Podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash crazy town podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Get your trial today. Ace Podcast. You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast. Season 1, Episode 15, with special guest host TNT Dynamite. On today's show, we'll be discussing the worst bridesmaid in the history of the world, what one man did to get back at the Department of Motor Vehicles, and what happens when a prison lets a man out accidentally 90 years early. All that and more today on the Crazy Town Podcast. Podcast. One, take three. Welcome once again to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, your host, and I am here once again with TNT Dynamite. Go ahead and say hello to everyone, sir. TNT Dynamite here, the explosive one. Thanks for having me back, Jonas. I really do enjoy doing this with you. Well, it's like a magical pony ride every time you're on. And so I like magical pony rides, so I try to do it as often as possible. You can ride my pony anytime you want. Oh, like Genuine? <laughs> Just like Jenny Wine. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and tell everybody about your shit so they can come oh, check yeah. you out? Not your actual feces, like your products. <laughs> your content, I guess, would be the correct term. Yeah, well, um, TNT Dynamite, TNT, D I N O, and my G H T. I'm on the fucking Twitter, and like, there's lots of people on there. Me and uh, Jennifer Lopez, uh, we're on there. Uh, also on the YouTube, TNT Dynamite. Uh, spelled the same way. I do some Let's Play co- commentary type stuff on there, so, you know, come and hang out. You know, Twitter is something what? that you and Dwayne The Rock Johnson have in common. Holy shit, are you serious? Yes. Oh, I'm basically The Rock now. <laughs> you are, I, I agree with that totally. <laughs> For everyone who doesn't know, TNT Dynamite and The Rock, they're basically the same person. Basically. So, I want to thank everybody for checking out the show. We have some interesting things to talk about today. I do want to shout out to the Not Alone podcast. It's a uh, podcast that focuses on the mysterious and unexplained stories of the world. It's a two-person show, Sam and Jason. They uh, try to take a conversational take on the stories and fill you in. It's a great show, great guys. Uh, They are available to be checked out at notalonepodcast.com. They are also part of the Ace Podcast Network acepodcast.com tell them that Jonas sent you so they know I'm doing my part but if you are following us on Twitter you can do it now at the crazy town pod see our website thecrazytown.com it has all the ways to listen follow and hate the show make sure you tell us if you hate it I appreciate that but anyways me and Dynamite we'll be right back (laughs) on the crazy town podcast to blow your mind with great stories of the world we'll be right back where am i hey this is Cade, and this is jeff from the super pp time podcast and you're listening to the crazy town podcast with jonas and you obviously know that because you can't listen to a podcast accidentally you could if you're a very confused person and we are back on the crazy town podcast jonas here with tnt dynamite uh dynamite do you know any crazy ladies <laughs> Every girl I've ever dated. Well, you know, I don't know if they've uh, hit the level of this wonderful lady that we're about to talk about now. No, they were like, eat their own feces crazy. Wow. They some shit eaters, huh? <laughs> one or two, one or two. Well, I can't judge, man. Can't judge them. I guess they liked it. But uh, So this happened in Charlotte Cl- County, Florida. 
Go figure. Mm. All the crazy uh. shit in the world happens in fucking Florida. <laughs> What are you telling? <laughs> <laughs> this girl's name sound. She sounds like such a nice, sweet girl. Her name was Amanda Willis. Oh. And and she was asked to be the maid of honor at her Fred's wedding. You know, two two BFFs fucking hanging out. Like, hey girl, yeah. you want to be my maid of honor? She's like, yeah, oh yeah. You know, I want to catch your shit. Like, not like literal <laughs> shit. I want to catch your shit. <laughs> Most important day in that young lady's life. I want to catch your shit. Like her. Flowers, you know? She wants to get yeah, the bouquet. Okay. She wants to be the next one the married. She wants the frog. The bouquet. Yeah, the bouquet. So, so you know, you know, after the wedding, you know, you have a little reception. And and the article said that once the reception started, Miss Amanda Willis, in quotes, hit the bottle hard. <laughs> Isn't that what you're supposed to do at a reception? <laughs> right, right. Well, it says that in about 20 to 30 minutes, she drank almost an entire bottle of Fireball. Good for her. Right. I like right. a woman that could put it away. Right. So, you know, so I mean, she's kind of fucked up. She does what any normal drunk girl would do. She starts asking everybody for their keys. Wait, what? <laughs> she started asking patrons of the reception for their keys to their automobiles. Yeah, because I'm drunk and you should drive home. I just drank a whole bottle of Fireball. I need your keys. That sounds like a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right. So, I can tell this is going somewhere. Oh, it's going many places. So the first, so what she decided to do, like any normal person, she found the best man and just pulled the key, his keys out of his pocket. Oh. oh because, you okay. know, he wouldn't just give them to her, so she took them. Okay. She's a girl who just takes what she wants. She's a go-getter. <laughs> Okay, so far she's just a, a little sociopathic and nothing, yes. n- nothing too bad so far. Well, she decided she was going to take the car for a spin. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> when she started I'm backing sure. the car up, she almost hit the best man, whose key she just stole. Uh... And then when she started going forward, he hugged onto the car and she started dragging him behind. Oh, my God. This is the best man. <laughs> So then some of the other guests decided to intervene and wrestled Miss Amanda Willis out of the car, freeing the man being drugged behind it and getting the automobile out of her drunken grasps. So which she decided she would just run into the house because at that point I'd probably be pretty embarrassed. What about you? Uh, yeah, I naturally would be. Can, can I just throw in that, uh, at TNT Dynamite Industries, and I'm, I'm sure at the Crazy Town Podcast Incorporated, we do not uh, advocate the use of alcohol while operating motor vehicles. We do not condone drunk driving. No. No. No, no we don't. So, she, so <laughs> no. She, no. No, we don't. So she goes into the house, and, you know, she's, you know, probably, yeah. best case scenario, she probably should go lay down in her bed, take a little nap. Yeah, man. Hey, you well, fucking up. Miss Willis decided it would be better to just start chugging Captain Morgan's out of the bottle instead. Okay, yeah. I, I'm like I, I I respect her and then you the drunk driving, I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh and then more drinking, I'm like, okay, I like this girl. Right, right. She's a she's a party girl. She likes to have fun. Yeah, I respect that. So they interviewed one of the guests at the party who said uh-huh. who, who who was the one who said she went in, and when he confronted her, she hit him in the face. She came out of the house. Oh. <laughs> Does the story say why she hit him? What was the question? Oh, he probably was... said, I don't think you should be drinking. And she just smacked him. <laughs> that would be my guess. So, yeah, I mean, that's probably enough to get hit. Eh, at, at this point. point, they called the sheriff. Oh, so, wow. So the sheriff shows up. Uh-huh. And... I got to give this girl some credit. She claimed that she was having an asthma attack. <laughs> and then pretended to have a seizure. Oh, yeah, because those two go hand in hand. Right, right. When you're when you're asthmatic, you also seize. Yeah, cuz yeah, that happens. So so they took Miss Willis away, and you would think that would be probably where the story ended. Oh, but it doesn't end there. When she got to the hospital, she exposed herself to sheriff's deputies. Oh. <laughs> then she assaulted two medics. What the fuck? <laughs> and kicked her bedpan over. 
that was the icing on the cake for you of the story. <laughs> that was the last thing they talked about when she kicked her oh, in the bedpan. Okay. <laughs> then it was it said in a sad note, her and the bride are no longer friends. Oh, that was that, that was the icing on the cake. It was the bedpan. BFFs no more. <laughs> I could not be friends with a bedpan kicking no. bitch. No, you know forever is <laughs> forever me. in this BFF. It's just best fucking friends. Yeah. They were fucking, <laughs> but now they're not. <laughs> oh, is, is that what happened? Yes. I didn't realize it was so insidious. Well, she <laughs> right. She was charged with larceny, battery, grand theft. Wow. And a probation violation. <laughs> Go figure. She was well, already she on probation for whole- something else. <laughs> Uh-huh. I mean, who who would have yeah, ever thought that, that that bitch would ever do anything that uh that would be on probation for? I mean, that's, that's a normal night, right? Yeah, you're a fucking maniac. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. Or, All right, let's be real. What kind of problems do you think this girl yeah. has? Uh, I I tend to think alcoholism is <laughs> probably a, a strong issue with her. What about you probably think she, her main demon? Do you, you think she's bipolar? I mean, uh, that's a possibility. But I mean, uh, an alcoholic they tend to have like those those type of mood swings when it comes to that's you know true. they can't control themselves when they when do they. Do you drink. think she's arachnophobic? <laughs> 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 Where do you get this shit? Was there a spider? Did I miss something? I've been drinking, so no, you let I me just, know if I, I missed just, something. I just wanted to know if you thought she was afraid of spiders, that's all. Uh, uh yes. Ah, there must have been next. a spider in that bottle of fireball. <laughs> next question. <laughs> Nailed it. Yes. <laughs> Does she live by the motto, two jerks, one squirt? <laughs> Oh, come on, that's esoteric as fuck. Nobody's getting that, dude. Nobody's gonna get that but me and you. <laughs> I think anyone that has a good sense of humor can laugh at two jerks, one squirt. Two jerks, one squirt. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's for all you uh, premature ejaculators out there. <laughs> the Crazy Town would like to feel for you on the fact of your premature ejaculation. Yeah, I don't feel like premature ejaculators are represented well in the podcast community. Maybe we should make a, a premature ejaculator podcast. What are we, what are we it, sympathize? It'd be, it'd be over before it started. <laughs> God damn it, this guy's a genius. <laughs> swear, man. <laughs> Anyways, that's as fucking crazy as it got. I thought it was pretty nuts. Like if that, yeah, if like if that shit happened, like I can't even imagine. But you know what the best part about all this is? With today's day and age, you know there's so many videos of this that people have from this wedding. Like you yeah. know, like the whole thing is probably there's probably if you put all the videos together, it would be like a docudrama about like this fucking poor girl's fucking downward spiral like she probably just like lost her best friend and now she's in jail and we're here to laugh at her and make fun of her so yeah, I'm looking up video of it right now while we go to break <laughs> <laughs> alright you check it out if we find it we're going to find send some links for you and we'll be right back at the crazy town podcast <laughs> This is DK from Vaguely Accurate, and you're listening to The Crazy Town on the Ace Podcast Network. And we are back on The Crazy Town Podcast, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite. Uh, Dynamite, Ah. have you ever... uh, ah, What was that? I was going to say hi, guys. (laughs) Well, hi. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back, sir. (laughs) Great to be here. All right. It sounds like it. So... Have you ever wanted to, like, stick it to the local DMV, like, just because they're such a pain in the ass? Wait a minute. This, this is sounding oddly sexual. Are you asking me if I ever wanted to fuck an attendant? At no, the no, 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 no. Have you ever wanted to, like, give the Department of Motor Vehicles a piece of your mind, so to speak? Oh, yeah. Fuck those assholes. 
So, I found a really good story. A story of a man yeah. with a lot of spare time on his hands. Okay. So, he must have really wanted to stick it to the government as well. This happened in January of this year, 2017, in Lebanon, Virginia. In Lebanon. A, yeah, Lebanon. Like, not the... Yeah, not the Middle Eastern country. Actually, okay. Virginia. All right. So, so, in September, he tried to call the DMV to figure out which address he should put on his son's new car's licensing paperwork because he had homes that spanned two different counties and he wanted to do the right thing. Okay. So, so I mean, that makes sense, right? You know, like, I mean, if you got called the DMV, I mean, shit, it's, it's not a very easy task. So he tried to call the Lebanon DV and he got routed to the Richmond, Virginia DMV instead. So oh, he, no. he couldn't he couldn't get him to get the right answer. So he filed what is called a FOIA request, which I didn't know existed. This is legit information. It you can uh -huh. submit under it's called the Freedom of Information Act, and you can use it to obtain public government information such as, you know, the direct number to the Lebanon DMV. You can get, like, direct numbers to a lot of government entities, but you have to, like, file a submission. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that either. So he uh, so he got the number, direct number to the Lebanon DMV, and he called them up, and guess what they told him? Uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> they, they told him that that right. number wasn't for public use. Well, come on now. Right. So he calls up there, and instead of just giving him the fucking answer, she wants to be a bitch and tells him that that number is not for public use. So. Oh, wow. So what did he do? He just kept calling. Until they, <laughs> until they finally answered his question. So, so, so he uh, won. How many times did he call, Jonas? It didn't say. We'll say 34, but don't look that up. Oh. I don't want to be a liar. <laughs> We can call this guy. He'll probably gladly tell you how many times he calls. So yes. My journalistic integrity <laughs> says don't check that fact because I don't know the answer. But I'll make it up anyways because I'm a good liar. I mean, storyteller. Yeah. I mean, I believe it. Right. 34 times. All right. Cool. So, oh, that's a couple. so when he got him on the phone, he, he decided, you know what? I finally got my small win. But you know what? He said, while I have you on the line... Why don't you give me the number to nine other DMVs that are local around here? So I have the numbers to all of those. Oh. And the employee wouldn't give them to him, of course. So what did any nor what would any normal person do, considering he already got his question answered and really had no bearing on his life? I would go on with my life. He decided to sue them. Oh, what? <laughs> sue them for what? Um... He was, um, uh, oh, I have it down here. I'll tell you about it in a second. All right, all right. So he decided to take him to court. He, What this man said was that if they were going to inconvenience him, he would inconvenience them back. So he has the mentality of a two-year-old. <laughs> and more money than he knows what to do with, apparently. Right, 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 and a lot of free time on his hands. So... But just wait, dude. The payoff on this is fucking golden. This is great. So he filed three lawsuits. Two against the specific employees at the DMV and one against the DMV himself. They were for um, the intentional breaking of public records law. Because they're supposed to give you that information. It's public record. But they refused. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they dismissed the lawsuits in court when a uh, representative from the state attorney's general office handed him a list of the numbers in the courtroom. So they walked over and said, here's the nine numbers you want, and he said, case dropped. This is Wait, what? what? <laughs> the fuck? He literally just wanted to fuck with them until he got what he wanted. Wow. So, so, once, so once he got the numbers in court, he dropped it, and they didn't. He, they said it says here that the uh, the employees or in the DMV could have been fined between five hundred and twenty five hundred dollars for the intentional yeah. breaking of this law. Yeah, because they were they were in the wrong, but he's an asshole. Oh, it gets even better. Well, how much of an oh, asshole this guy is? Oh, it's so good. I'm telling you, I, this is like everyone who's ever had a problem with the DMV will appreciate this story by the time we get to the end. So right. he uh. He said after this that the numbers were irrelevant to him. He just wanted to prove his point. 
<laughs> so that's why he dropped the case and didn't care if they got any fines. Yeah, I respect that. Sometimes the point is what really matters. Right. Oh, absolutely. So he had one final act planned, he says. He uh, he owed uh-huh. the DMV $3,000 for, like, the cars and all the stuff that he had to do. You know, the original reason he was trying to, you know, he owed him three grand for taxes and title uh-huh. and all that bullshit. That's... So uh, what any normal person would do, he decided he was going to pay them in pennies. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> did he did he roll them? Oh, or I'm were getting they to that. Seen? He collected hundreds of rolls of pennies over the next few weeks from all the different banks he could. He then paid eleven people to break them all open and fill oh. it, <laughs> and fill up wheelbarrows with pennies. Oh no! It says it cost him. <laughs> it says it cost him four hundred dollars. To pay the people, $440 to pay the people to open the pennies. It cost him $400 for the wheelbarrows. It cost him $165 for the lawsuits. So it cost him $1,005 to drop off, to get 10 phone numbers and draw in and know the satisfaction of dropping off 300,000 pennies. At the DMV for them to pay his bill. <laughs> that's that's really almost worth it, though, honestly. <laughs> Fucking with the DMV, priceless. Oh, I know, dude. And so, under the Coinage Act of 1965, coins are legal tender for all debts. And But private businesses and individuals do not have to accept coins, but government facilities oh. do. And let me guess, he did his fucking homework. He did. So he brought them in there, and the employees had to count them all by hand. Oh, that sucks. It says that it took them them until 1 o'clock in the morning to count all the pennies, and he stayed there and watched them count until every single penny was counted to make sure he didn't miss a cent. (laughs) So for like eight hours or more, this dude just sat there watching the DMV employees count 300,000 pennies in five different wheelbarrows full that he brought in to pay this debt. (laughs) You know what? (laughs) Beyond, Beyond the story... I'm really happy is that the Crazy Town Podcast is a place where you can get your fucking hot litigious uh, documentation information from. We have learned that you can get the public records for any government public knowledge fucking number that you need and that they have to accept coins. Right. So we learned we also learned a couple episodes ago that dolphins cannot breathe autonomously either. <laughs> and that jerking off dolphins, <laughs> dolphins is not something you want to do. Right. That's also what we learned. Yeah. So I thought, like, when I read this story, it, like, screamed, put me on the podcast. Because this is just something that, like, it got zero coverage. Maybe in Lebanon, Virginia, or Richmond, the next biggest city, you got coverage. But yeah. nobody talks about this shit. Like, no. but, but it's a fucking awesome story. Like. <laughs> It's like one of the coolest fucking things that I have heard that anyone has done to the DMV. So for every person out there who's had to sit in the DMV for four hours and got to the counter and didn't have the fucking paperwork you needed and all this other shit, this guy took one. I guess he didn't take one. He gave one for all of us. Yeah, he, he was definitely a pitcher, not the recipient. He fucking fisted the proverbial ass of the DMV to this. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you say he spent in total? Uh, well, a thousand and five dollars, and then the the three grand he had to pay that he actually owed for like his oh, taxes yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. That's so one thousand and five dollars. Like, I mean, I don't have a thousand and five dollars to blow on something like this, but I'm sure as fuck that, glad that this guy did. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, this sounds like something that happened over the course of like a few weeks or months. Between he had to like call them, get pissed, file the paperwork, get the number, file lawsuits, take them to court, go back, get the pennies, pay people to open the pennies, fill up the wheelbarrows, take them. I mean, this is this wasn't like it happened all in like three days. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, look, not all not all heroes wear capes, man. 
he's not the one he's not the one we asked for, but he's the hero we needed. <laughs> right. They have like it's his his bat signals like a roll of pennies, they shine <laughs> under the sky. Every time there's an injustice at the DMV, Penny Man will be there. <laughs> He just goes in and throws handful of pennies at the fucking clerks. <laughs> Fuck you, DMV! <laughs> ah, we've been thwarted again. Ah, oh, there comes here comes all Mister Weathers and hell with his handful of pennies. Would have got away for it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Why is it that all superhero extras sound like fifties fucking gangsters? <laughs> 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 yeah, see, <laughs> you'll never catch me, Penny Man. <laughs> no, see, you don't catch me, copper, penny man. Yes, all of that and the above. So, if you have any stories about people who like pennies, send them to the Crazy Town <laughs> Podcast. I'd be more than happy to talk about them on the show. And we will be right back on the Crazy Town Podcast. <laughs> All right, and we are back at the Crazy Town Podcast. I have a real enticing, sticky story for you, Dynamite. Sounds sultry. Um, it could be, depending on who you are. So, uh, you ever been to Walmart? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't much care for it, but I mean, hey, it, it's a, it's kind of a pricey. it's kind of a factory of sadness. A factory of sadness. <laughs> That's one way to describe it. The only person in that bitch that's happy is the guy at the door that's handing out smiley stickers. And that's just because it's the only time he gets out of the house. <laughs> no, nah, nah, he's sad too inside. <laughs> that, that, that's probably the saddest guy. He just looks happy. He just he just pretends. He puts on the front. He like gets off work and literally yeah. looks like a fucking sociopath. Like he just walks around with like a fucking like a, like grinding his teeth. <laughs> He goes home and visits, like, the fucking woman that he has in his basement that tied up. I'm sorry. That's probably is that too much for the podcast. <laughs> He's like, bitch, I handed out smile stickers all day. You better not smile at me. <laughs> goes home and kicks his dog. The all Crazy right. Town Podcast <laughs> does not condone kidnapping and locking women in the basement. I know. Right? That's so topical, too. All right. Yeah, but, okay, Walmart. Walmart. So this Walmart in Ohio, yeah. Marietta. Oh. I'm not yeah, sure. Hometown that was, heat. Yeah, it was some, yeah, it was somewhat, but by where we're where we're about. So, but the man who did this was in was from West Virginia. He decided to cross state lines to start a civil war between Wis wait not Wisconsin, West Virginia and Ohio. Wait, a war between West Virginia and Ohio? Not really. I'm just talking shit. So, oh god damn, I can't tell with you. <laughs> <laughs> that it'd be a way better story if he tried to start a civil war. <laughs> I thought this was a real story. Well, that's yeah. a story. Like it, it is about about a man from West Virginia who goes to Ohio Walmart in Marietta. He was okay. charged with pandering obscenity, one count of menacing by stalking, and one count of sexual imposition. I don't know what any of that means. Well, a woman reported a, a strange man lingering behind her really close. Mm -hmm. And then before she knew it, the man was gone and she felt something wet on her lower oh, back. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> I, I didn't, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> come on, indeed. So she went to the bathroom and found a <laughs> sticky substance. Son of a bitch. And, uh, this actually happened twice. Once was in November and once was in December. They, uh, they did find the man. He was arrested. And he first tried to tell the cops that he threw egg on the woman. Cause I you mean, know, that's a common thing. Look. Yeah. What do you, <sighs> all right. Go ahead. <laughs> then keep he later on. admitted keep, it was semen. <laughs> All right. He I was just it kidding. Was it but, was an egg. It was semen. Uh, sorry, guys. But in his defense, 
I guess not a defense. He did say that he had used syringes to shoot eggs, spit, and semen on women at least 12 different times. What the fuck? But, okay, my question is why? Why my would you shoot is, eggs at a woman? Well, yeah, why, yeah, why would you shoot eggs, spit? The semen, I understand, alright? Semen goes without, without I a question. I get the semen. Yes, <laughs> as fucking crazy as that is in this world, I understand why you would put semen on a girl. Why <laughs> eggs and spit, though? Well, it's not always a bad thing if you put semen on them. It just depends the situation. <laughs> I mean, it needs to be it needs to be welcomed. You can't just randomly throw some fucking smack dab on fucking somebody. That's why I don't question the semen. I mean, sometimes, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Right, right. In, in the middle of a fucking Walmart. In the, middle, in the middle of Walmart, you have to do what you got to do. <sighs> so do you want to, uh, I don't want to, I, I guess I don't want to end the episode on that kind of note. You want a bonus story? Oh, we got we a bonus. We're not going to end on the, the semen guy? No, this is actually, well, this is a very, like, happy story, but it still has a sad, oh. everything, everything we talk about is so depressing on this show. And that's, that's just the nature of the news, though, man. But go ahead. I, I'm ready to hear something else. All right. I, I really want your opinion on this. Cleanse. This is a yes, definitely a palate cleanser. There's no semen or bodily fluids involved in this. This is a one of those social topics, I guess. It, this could be debated. So okay. there was a man. His name is Rene Lima Marine. He's a 38 year old Hispanic man. Okay. He was sentenced to 98 years in prison on two in, in two different sentences for for robbing two video stores in Denver. Oh, wait, what a a video store? Yeah, I guess I guess just armed robbery. You know what I mean? He, what he mm. robbed was video store. He tried I guess they tried to rob what, Blockbuster there because they had to pay late fees. What's a video store? Are you fucking with me? No, dude, what the fuck? A video store? Like a Blockbuster they... video. Those don't exist anymore. Aren't those extinct? Yeah, this he, this happened. He, fucking, he, he was sentenced to ninety eight years in prison. I didn't get to the part about oh, what happened yet. Okay, okay. He originally 90- let, oh, let me let me step back. He originally okay. was sentenced to ninety eight years in prison. All the years ago, this happened. Okay, okay. This, wow. When he when he when he went to jail, blockbusters were still a thing. I imagine it wasn't okay. a blockbuster. It was like fucking Fred's Video Shack and Porno <laughs> Hub or whatever. Oh but yeah, okay, okay. We'll just say, well, here's what we'll say, because I'm all about journalistic integrity. We'll call it CC's Pornorama and Video yes. Rental Chain. That, that Actually, I've been to CC's before. Oh, have you? It's a very nice yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. I like the booths. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do you get sentenced to 98 goddamn years for robbing a video store. Well, because it was armed robbery, I think is what the point was. This isn't the point of the story. The, the robbery the robbery is kind of irrelevant. Okay, all right. So they were supposed to run... Um, the judge was supposed to put them down that they were supposed to run back-to-back, but accidentally wrote that they should run concurrent, so that he was r- serving both sentences oh, at the same time. Oh, he got off. So, no, he didn't get off, but he was released on parole in 2008. Eight years, no, yeah, eight years after he was in prison, he got released. So he got released 90 years early, when he should have never been put on parole in the first place. Oh, wow. So he got released on, like, a technicality. So, during this time he was released from prison, it was, it, uh, he, he got a job. He never had any parole violations. He found a woman. He adopted her kids. They had their own kids. Um, so, I mean, he, he basically ran the straight and narrow. He reformed himself. Oh, well, wonderful. Right. Well, in 2014, almost six years later, they realized they made a mistake. They came and arrested him and put him back in jail. This is the palace cleanse? <laughs> <laughs> I told you it had a happy start, but Let's not a happy Let's talk about the semen guy again, dude. This is the palate cleanse. It's <laughs> horrible. We want to leave you on a happy note about a man who got stripped away from his family because he got a lot of jail early. Jesus Christ, man. 
I like to I like to just spring it out of nowhere. Dude, I don't know where I find all this shit. It's always something. It's like always the thing you don't expect at all. Just like bam. I know, right? So is, is he still in jail now? Yeah, uh I believe so. Yeah, I believe they put him back in. He tried to fight it. Um Yeah. He claims he didn't know he should have shouldn't have been released. But I guess it the article said at one point he was filing an appeal of his original sentences. And he suddenly dropped it uh-huh. for no reason. So they suspect that he realized there was an error that he may got that he may get out on parole, and that's why he dropped the appeal. Oh. But but I mean, like this is where this this is the topic I wanted to get to. So obviously, this man has been reformed. He served eight years in jail for a robbery. No one died. It wasn't like it was murder. Yeah. Just a robbery. Served eight years, gets out on accident. He finds a wife. He holds a steady job. He has a family. He is not uh, missed. Uh, he has not messed up his parole or probation or whatever it is at all. In five or six years, mm. should he go back to jail? That's that is definitely a social question. That becomes the point of is the point of jail just to keep people there. Just for the fact of raising funds, because most jails are are for profit nowadays, or is it actually to reform the prisoner? Right. Like in this situation, you would think that any normal judge would go, all right, it was our error. We let you out. You were supposed to serve 90 more years. You've obviously reformed yourself, but we're putting you back in prison. It's fucking crazy, man. I know, dude. Like, God. it's like, I mean, yeah, it's it just it blows my mind. It's like a, it's like an issue. It's one of those issues that it's it's hard to fucking know what the hell. I mean, like, I don't even know. It would be so hard if you got told you were gonna get released from prison early to not take advantage of that, whether you knew it was true or not. Exactly. I've never been to prison well, myself. Me neither. Yeah, me neither. But uh, I mean, come, you don't have to lie to the listeners. All right. Jonas, this, I'm a hard, just be honest. I'm a hardened federale. <laughs> you were coming on girls in fucking Walmart. <laughs> yeah, we that all story know. about Walmart hits <laughs> awful close to home. When I said it was from our home area, I meant my house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but yeah, man, like this this shit blew my mind because I was like. I was like, I feel bad for the guy, because, like, I mean, granted, he should have been in prison and never had the ability to even reform or whatever, because he was sentenced to basically life, more or less. Yeah, but I is, mean... But is 98 years really a suitable sentence for a man who robbed a store and no one died? Yeah, there's got to be more to that, that he would get that that sentence. That's a fucking hardcore sentence, and, and basically you're saying that he got two life sentences. More, yeah, because even, well, I mean, even what's 98 divided by 2, I mean, fucking 40, 49, you know what I mean? So, I mean, so basically for each count, he got 49 years. Like, now I understand, this is where our legal system's kind of fucked up. Like, some states have different regulations and have different minimum maximums, whatever, and who knows, we yeah. don't know his background, maybe he it was his third strike, blah, 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 blah. But, like, that seems like an awful long time. Like, there's people who kill people that don't go to jail for 49 years. Yeah, exactly. Like, in cold blood murder people, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. they get, like, 10 years, 20 years. And this dude just robbed a video store and got 49 years. Yeah, and I think reformation is, is the main point, should be the main focus of a prison. So, if he's if he's having if good behavior, you know, nonviolent crime... Even though I guess like That's holding somebody up at gunpoint would probably be violent. I yeah, probably. But yeah, still, probably. but I mean, but like, if you can go, if you if you get out of prison, I mean, you know how many people reoffend? A um, a ton. Like this yeah, dude, this dude was a time. violent criminal, and in five and a half years or six years or whatever, had no reoccurrence of any sort of criminal activity, and started a family and held a job and all that. Like they said, it, he worked his way up through like a company. Like he started out as like a whatever and like, you know, ended up not like he wasn't like a fucking CEO or anything, but you know what I mean? He worked his way up. So 
just something to think about, man. And that's what I meant. Like I was going to leave it on a story like this. Now this is a very depressing story. Don't get me wrong, because yeah, this thanks man, for cleansing the palate. Yeah. yeah, well, it went from semen to like life tragedy. So I mean, like, <laughs> I'd rather have semen myself. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, there's a lid for every pot. <laughs> Take that out of context any way you want to. Yeah, that would be my new sound Jesus. clip. I'd rather have semen. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just start putting it in every episode. <laughs> I'd rather take semen. You're listening to the Crazy Town Podcast. That's going to be my new fucking intro. <laughs> Anytime I, I'm here with TNT Dynamite, even when you're not here, I'll be like, I'd rather like semen. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm glad you have something to say. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit well that's i mean that's about it dude that's about all the time that we have for today i did want to get to that story uh we had a little few minutes the other one was kind of short so i do want to thank everybody for listening i know this podcast goes up and down and around corners and we bullshit and we talk about all sorts of crazy stuff but we do want to thank you for listening please Send me feedback, give me an iTunes review, subscribe, follow, all that shit. Uh, TNT Dynamite, you want to tell everybody where they can find your content, my friend? Uh, yeah, I'm TNT Dynamite. Uh, you can call me The Rock. Uh, <laughs> Very similar to The Rock, you are. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, we discovered that, I think, last episode. No, it was um, the I'm beginning on of this one, I believe. Was it? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, so TNT uh, Dynamite Dwayne Johnson. Uh, I'm on <laughs> I'm on Twitter uh, TNT Dynamite TNT D I N O M I G H T. You know it by now. Uh, also <laughs> on the YouTube, I do some let's plays there. Come and join us. We talk about penises and uh, <laughs> d- not about guys who lose their goddamn freedom unfairly. <laughs> and if you aren't following the Crazy Town on Twitter, it's at the Crazy Town Pod. Check out our website, thecrazytown.com. Uh please, like I said, subscribe on iTunes, soundcloud.com forward slash the crazy town podcast, patron.com forward slash the crazy town podcast. If you want to donate some funds to the show, be much appreciated yeah. for TNT Dynamite and for Jonas. We are out.